What's going on everyone? Christian here from CK Wraps. So welcome to my office. Uh, this is where I get some paperwork and stuff like that done. Now, don't forget to give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see some more videos like this. Uh, this is a new addition to the rap channel as far as videos go where I'm going to start getting into different things. Today we're going to be using heat transfer film and I'm going to show you how to cut out your decals or your stickers or your shapes or whatever it is that you want and then apply them to your clothing like I have on, on my sweatshirt and my hat and you can do them pants, you can do any kind of fabric essentially. Heat transfer film or HTV, HTV is H heat transfer vinyl, is something that's going to go on with an iron afterwards, okay? So you can iron this on anything that you can get an iron onto, you can basically get this to stick to. How long does it last? Well, I've had these sweatshirts, I have like five or six t-shirts and sweatshirts, and I've had them all done for over a year now, probably about a year, uh, 14 months. Wear them all the time, and they last. I mean, I'll, I'll come over and show you. Even with this finicky, of a logo as I have right here on the crest, it still sticks very well. Now you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need a plotter, which is this right here, and everything that I'm that you, that I have here today, other than my computer, is going to be in the description below. So if you're looking to grab any of this stuff and maybe start your own business or create or do your own clothing line for your business itself, have your own business and your own clothing line or just do this as a hobby, make stickers, whatever you want. You can do all kinds of stuff with this machine right here. I believe they range around two to $300. Uh, very affordable as far as, you know, this could easily turn around to make you a lot more money. Um, I mean, people are very into getting their own logos and things like that on their clothing. They're also into getting stickers made and things like that. I know I have a friend out of New Brunswick and he's, he uses his all the time and he makes tons and tons of stickers. This is a 12 inch plotter, it's nothing fancy, it's nothing crazy, but 12 inches means that we can have essentially our letters 12 inches tall, that's pretty tall, which means that we can scale that out quite far, you know, usually about uh, two or three or four times in length, so as far as like a word goes. So, you know, you got one foot tall, but you can have like three or four feet long, that's, that creates quite a large banner. If you want something more serious, of course, you can get something more industrial. Again, this is just available on Amazon. Uh, we have a little cutting device here to keep our cuts straight. The mat right here comes with the plotter. You're going to need a weeding tool or a blade, and you're going to need a computer. Now, the Cameo uh, comes with, so it's going to say it right here on the lid, Silhouette Cameo. That comes with software, all right? Super easy to install. And if you're not really sure how to use the software, there are other videos out there that will show you how to do more with the software. I'm gonna show you something that's very basic today, which is how to trace out an image and then take that image, send it to the plotter and have the plotter cut out our decal for us. So the vinyl that we're using is Vivid's heat transfer film. Now I have this on my sweatshirt right now and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So let's have a look. So about 14 months. It's a little bit wrinkled, obviously, but and then the back. And they're all they're all in fantastic shape. Now, what's a little bit more finicky is is because my logo is very thin. So if I don't iron this down properly initially, we could have issues down the road. What I also recommend doing, and I don't know if this is an actual thing or not, but I recommend washing the clothing first if you can. If you can wash the clothing first and you can pre-shrink it, and that way when the, when the clothing goes to shrink, it won't cause the vinyl or the logo to kind of crumple up together a little bit. So again, I think it's probably more beneficial to pre-shrink the clothing. Sorry, excuse me. That way you don't have, you have a nice flat surface to work with and you always, sorry, you always have a nice flat looking logo. Uh, hat, not so much, you don't need to. I don't really wash a hat, but again, so, very basic stuff. You can get weeding tools. Some of these plotters do come with weeding tools. This one didn't, so I don't know why, but no big deal. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna bring you in to my computer and I'm gonna show you how to actually trace out this, this logo. So what I've done is I've, I'm doing this for my nephews for Christmas. Great Christmas gift, right? I've got a couple of hoodies here that I just picked up. They're blank and one's a zip up, one's a pullover. And I'm gonna make them 
something fun for Christmas. One of them's getting uh, Mr. JKW on it. So I used Photoshop to create the, the logo that I wanted. And then you don't have to, I just did it because I know how to use Photoshop a little bit. So you can use Photoshop to do that and then you can take your Photoshopped image and you can import it to the software. So that's what I've done today and that's what I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, so I have my old logos here. We're gonna go back to the design, which is, this is my nephew's design right here. All right. So this is what I had initially. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here. I'm going to open the file and bring in his logo. So I just kind of was making him an avatar. Uh, he has a YouTube channel and it's called the Max Bros. So I wanted to do something for his YouTube channel. So here we go. This obviously now we need to scale this. So it's much too large. So let's actually just get rid of this right now. And let's take our image and scale it down. What this is going to do is going to, it's going to reveal our silhouette pad. This is 12 by 12. And we're going to drag our image into this area. Now, as you notice down here, it's going to say how wide the logo is or how wide the image is and how tall the image is right over here. So that's going to show you those two things. Now we would get a more exact measurement if we cropped this more a little bit closer to the bottom and a little bit closer to the top and closer to the sides. All right. This way we would have a more approximate measurement. Now I know how large I want this to be because I have actually the measurement already over here, which is this one. I was just scaling them out. So I'm going four point, almost 4.4 inches across and it's about two points. What does that say? 2.26 tall. So we're going to make this one over here, sorry, over here, approximately the same. Take it down. We want to drag it from the corner. It's going to be important. So right about there. If you're unsure about how you want this to be, what you or how what size you want this to be, what you can do is you can plot out a bunch of different ones on a 12 by 12. You can fit a whole bunch in here. You know, you don't have to just use a, a big sheet of vinyl for one little logo. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to zoom in. Okay, so now that I've zoomed in, what we want to do is we want to trace this. We're going to go over to the sidebar over here, open the trace panel, click that. That's going to give us an option to select the trace area. We're going to take this and we're going to go around the area. Make sure everything that you want is inside the box. Now there are two ways to do this. We can do an outline or we can do a solid fill. A solid fill is, in my opinion, is better or for, it's been better for me. I'm not a professional at this, by the way, just so you know, but I do know how to do this a little bit. So a solid fill is better for this situation, in my opinion, because it's going to give me the inside of this area right here or any other areas that might be blocked off, right? So if we do outline, what we're going to end up getting is the actual only the outline and we don't often always get the inside. So we can, we can do this and we can adjust, we can adjust things there and we can get an outline just like this. So we can do solid fill or we can do outline. What you want to do is you want to adjust the threshold. Okay. The threshold is going to give you an idea of what your image is going to look like. Once you adjust the threshold, what you can do is you can hit trace. And once you see that everything looks as smooth as you think it should be, you can hit trace and we can take this and we can drag it. So outline does work for this one. I did do solid fill before. Uh, so outline is good and that looks really nice, right? That's going to give us a really nice cut and exactly what we need. So we can actually drop that right back in there if we wanted to. It, keep in mind, it's not going to be exactly perfect. And again, this has color in it, right? So you're seeing like a little bit of gold and a little bit of black. This is just going to be a decal without the actual highlighted areas here. So we're not getting the same thing. This is not a printer. This is a plotter that we're using. So as soon as we've done that, we can take this and we can actually delete or, or get rid of this image. Let's just get rid of it, which is going to leave us with this image right here. Now I want to show you what solid fill looks like. So solid fill is this. So solid fill is going to give you 
something that looks like that. We, need, we would need to go higher in this situation, so we want to fill in every little hole. You see the little hole there? We've got to fill that in. And then go up a little bit higher, sharpen it up a little bit around, I think the speckle, we can bring that down a little bit maybe. So if we were to go trace here, what this will do is it's going to show us pretty much the same thing. All right, very, very similar effect. Can be done either way, right? Just so you see. All right, so now what we do is we have this. We can go over to send. What it's going to do, it's going to show us right here what this looks like. So that looks good to me. We can zoom in. We can make sure everything looks the way it should. Cool. There's no empty spaces or anything like that. These dots are probably not going to come through, so I'm not worried about it. I know I'm missing one on the end here. I'm not worried about it. This one should be fine because it's large enough. These won't be able to transfer over most likely, so no big deal. So we're going to leave all the settings as is. And the next part that we would need to do is send, okay? Once, we're, once we load the plotter, we're going to send the image to the plotter, and it's going to print, uh, plot this out. So I'm going to remove the camera back. Let's use our cutter. So Vivid's heat transfer film has very, uh, has a lot of instructions on the backing. So this backing we're actually going to be removing. It says to remove it. And I'm going to give you a better close up of what it actually says in a moment. But I'm going to cut the, the film using my sheet here. We don't have to go very large because I only, I'm only doing the one logo. Now it has a nice little press tab right here. This is going to hold the vinyl in place and we can cut it simply like that. Very easy. Let's get rid of this. So what I'm going to do is bring you in to view the instructions here. Now one thing that you're going to have to keep in mind is that it says before using the film peel the protective liner to expose the adhesive or cutting part of the film, okay? Cutting part of the film means that we're gonna be cutting on the back side of this, okay? So if we don't cut on the back side of this, we're gonna end up trying to cut through the clear layer and that's not gonna do anything for us. So we need to cut on the back side of this. When you run it through the plotter, it's gonna go adhesive side up. Yeah, so you can see that I'm peeling off the actual clear laminate. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is just get the liner perfect. So that's off. That's going to expose the white side. Gold side, white side. We're cutting on this side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to load this into the plotter adhesive side up. Let me move the cutting device. Let's move the plotter forward. This mat comes with it, like I said, so what we're going to do is load that into there. What we also need to do is we need to invert our image horizontally, so I almost forgot to do that. This is very important. This is not always something that you're going to do. If you're doing decals, you don't need to do this, okay? If you're just doing decals where you're going to be cutting normally, then you won't need to do this step at all. But because we're going to be ironing this onto a shirt, this is what we're going to have to do. We'll go back to design, we're going to click on our image, and then we're going to flip horizontally, just like that. We're going to go back to send, it's going to be flipped. All right, because when we go to cut on the back side, or cut on the back side, we're going to actually end up flipping this, and we need to put it on our shirt facing the other way. So that part's done, and let's get the plotter loaded. Let's load. So I, I like to load the, the mat first, and then I'm going to go down on the bottom corner here and click the little arrows, and I'm just going to feed the vinyl in. Lift the lever here, make sure the vinyl sits tight. Go in a little bit further. That looks good. I'm going to straighten it out slightly. Let's lift the lever again. I'm pulling towards me with my finger just to try and keep it nice and tight. And then we're going to put the lever back up to its spot at the top. That's going to hold it there. Now this will only take about 30 seconds. So we're going to go over to our, our laptop. 
and we're going to hit send in the bottom corner. We're going to leave all the rest of the settings exactly as they are that came with it. So let's hit send. going to do all the hard work for us. It's done. So, as soon as it's finished, we can hit unload. And that's going to show us, that's going to show us on the back side right here, our logo. On the front side, it's actually going to be forward, right? So now if I take this and I put it right here, it's perfect. Okay, so that's how it's going to have to face. I'm going to show you how to remove the rest of the adhesive. So we can see our logo. Let's cut out around it. We don't need all of this. What I want to do is I want to make the bottom cut very straight. So this is where the actual cutter comes in handy. So I want to keep the logo at the bottom straight so that I can line it up really nicely on the shirt or whatever I'm putting it on. If I have a jagged cut or a crooked cut on the bottom, it makes it a little bit more difficult. So this is going to help a lot in keeping it nice and straight. Perfect. So we're going to go and we're going to hold this panel down right here and we're going to cut. I'm a little bit low actually, or a little bit high, I almost ruined it. So let's go for it. Now we're ready. This is going to make it much easier to line up on the shirt. So we can finish off this little bit right here. Mainly just seeing a nice 90 degree corner will help a lot. Now what we need to do is we need to flip this over and we need to remove the white. So we would use our weeding tool right here. I'm going to use a blade. It's a little bit safer with a weeding tool. This blade is very sharp, but we'll just be very careful. So you want to start right at the crack. It usually helps. I'm just going to score the, score the vinyl and start removing all this gold around the lettering. Okay, we're not removing the lettering, we're removing everything around the lettering. Take your time when you do this, you don't want to mess it up. It's not really easy to mess up, but it can be messed up. So You're going to see that we're going to lose our periods that are right around the J, K, and W. So this is actually super nice because it's, uh, it's a nicer finish than mine. It's like a matte gold metallic. Very cool. I'm kind of jealous now. This is a newer version of the uh, gold than, I, from one of, than what I have on my shirt. So we lost one of those periods. No big deal. We're going to lose the other one too. They're gone. There's some things are just too small to plot out. So hopefully everyone can see what's happening here. It might be better if I just show you on here. So you can see as I pull, the plotter is actually cut right through the film, but not the clear layer. And now you can see why you cut on the back side. Cool. So that looks good. We just have to get that little bit out of the R. So again, same deal. If you don't have a weeding tool, a little pin, sometimes it will do the job. It's not a big deal. Sometimes these... Uh, Sometimes the plotters will come with the tools that you need, sometimes they don't. 
So let's just get that guy out of there. And that's it. So the more of those types of letters that you have or more um, filled areas and images that, that are like that, that you can't just remove the outer area and everything comes off all at once, the more work it's gonna be to actually get this done. But that's what you do. And this is actually ready right now to be ironed on to the piece of clothing, to the hoodie. And again, that's going to be a crest. So that's gonna go. So now that we've plotted out our decals and weeded out whatever was left over that we don't need from the back, what we need to do is iron this on. So transfer this on using heat. Very simple stuff, an iron, an ironing board, nothing fancy. Make sure that your clothing is clean, doesn't have any, it's not soiled or anything like that. It's, uh, you know, pretty much lint free and that's going to give you a better finish in the end because you're not going to be ironing over any lint or have any specks in your, in your uh, decal or your lettering. So remember how we flipped everything inverted before we plotted it out? Well, this is how it turns out when we go to iron it on. So it's actually going to be facing the right way. So it is slightly sticky to the backside, but the actual decal itself is not sticky. So this is my nephew's YouTube channel. This is gonna go on the backside of the sweatshirt, uh, the Max Bros, that's the YouTube channel. Give him a follow if you have kids, uh, just a fun channel. He's about 10 and just a fun channel, video games, jokes, having fun, that kind of stuff, kid stuff. Mr. JKW is gonna go as a crest, approximately where mine is. Now this is a pullover. So it's just a plain black pullover. I'm a big fan of black and gold combination. So that's why I chose the gold and black hoodies to go with it. But I mean, the gold actually goes well with red and white. I mean, you can see I've got, I've got kind of a gray hoodie. So this is where it becomes very basic. What we need to do here is just line up. I'm gonna do the front first. What we need to do is line up where the crest is. So here is the, here's the hood. Here's approximately where I want the crest to go. Now, it's more of an eyeball type of thing. What you can do is you really want to lay out your, your shirt, if you're doing a shirt, and try and line it up with the ironing board. That's going to help you get a better idea of where you want the placement. So I also recommend, again, pre-shrinking the, the materials. This way, nothing shrinks later on and your decal remains flat. I'm gonna iron this spot right here just to flatten it out a little bit. And then I'm going to find an approximate spot. I'm gonna kind of have a look at mine maybe. Okay, you don't want it too low. We don't want it too high. So it seems to be somewhere right around here. That would be a good spot. And somewhere where your heart would be, I suppose. Very good. So we can, we can move this around. It's not like we just put it down and can't reposition it, we can move it wherever we want. I'll even move the ironing board in slightly more so you can see. So we can move it wherever we want. It won't actually bond until we add the heat. So I'm gonna take my iron and put it right there. What we wanna do is we wanna iron it. I, I have on the hottest setting for the most part. 15 to 20 seconds or so. Keep the iron moving, don't uh, leave it in one spot for too long. We don't want to burn the the t-shirt or the hoodie or whatever you happen to be doing this on. And I'm not pushing too, too hard, not until I know that I've got it down, because I don't want to crumple it up. So it could be a little bit soft. So we want to apply a bit of pressure, but I'm, I'm mainly letting the iron do the work right now. Give it a second every once in a while. Just small movements here. So the more finicky parts when it comes to this are the edges or very small lettering or very small uh, numbers, little periods, that kind of stuff. Now you can see that the edges of these letters have a bit of detail to them and they're quite thin. So we wanna make sure that these are really ironed down well and bonding to the clothing. You can use steam, I have steam on mine. You can turn the steam setting off, it's not a big deal. I don't mind this steam setting on. What we need to do is give this 
about 30 seconds to a minute or so to cool. So I could just put it outside for a minute and it'll cool because it's winter time. In the meantime, I could potentially flip this over and do the backside. I am going to leave it right now and just give that a second. And then once this is cooled enough, I'm going to remove it. Okay, that should be about enough time. It's approximately a minute. I'm going to just check it out. And if it doesn't, if it seems like it's lifting the, the, the decal off, put it back down, put the cover back down, and then iron it some more. So we're going to take our time here. The transfer film, which is the clear layer on top, should come off pretty easily. It shouldn't be resisting you very much. As you can see, I'm barely pulling. And just take our time. Perfect. And there we have Mr. JKW on the front. Now, I'll give you a look, look at that in a second. I think it's tasteful and big enough. Cool, so now let's move over to the back. So again, what we wanna do is make sure that we're not including any lint in our decal. I also want to check out where the hood falls because I don't want the hood to cover a lot of the, uh, a lot of the decal. Still have the tag on here, so I'm just going to tuck that in. So I'm just going to give myself an approximate idea here on about where the hood would fall. There we go. So of course the hood's going to spread out a little bit. It's not going to be completely down, but I'm going to say slightly above the armpit area should be fine. I don't mind if the hood covers it a little bit. We just don't want it covering too much. So slightly above the armpit seam which is right around here so again we're making sure that our hood is our, our shirt is fairly straight or as straight as possible this will give us the better lineup with the decal again placement so it's going to go somewhere around here and you can see how it would help to actually have the the decal itself cut out as a nice symmetrical rectangle or box or whatever you decide to cut it out as but having symmetry is, is nice because this gives us a much better idea on where the the letters are to the edges and from top to bottom it also gives us a nice straight line which i can actually line up with the ironing board if that helps so i think we're going to go somewhere around here and if it's off by a millimeter or so it's not like anyone's going to notice. And now we're ready for this one. So I'll just usually go a lighter pass just to get it to kind of tack, especially when we're doing the bigger one here, from the inside out. The plastic uh, transfer film is very durable, so it doesn't just melt. It won't just melt to your fabric. Push, put a little pressure. That should be good. So we're going to give that another maybe a minute and a half, two minutes. Okay, so now it seems to have cooled down a little bit. We can check it out. Just take your time. If it cools down a little bit more, it's always a little bit better. Right now there's a if it's too warm still, there's an opportunity to wrinkle the transfer film. Or to wrinkle your, the gold is what I'm talking about. So we just want to take our time. Awesome. On the back side, we have the Max Bros. And then on the front, we have Mr. JKW, which is my nephew's initials. About the Mr., of course, not quite there yet. And that's that one. I also did my other nephews. So we've got Baby B. It's a little bit younger, it's a little bit smaller. 
and then through baby B on the front also as a crest. And that's pretty much it. So these will last, oh, these, the kids will outgrow these for sure before they even, it even comes off. But the longevity of the film itself is actually phenomenal. It can be washed, it can be ironed, you can do anything you want with it. It's very, very durable and the color doesn't fade or anything like that. And it doesn't just peel off on its own. Now I do hope this video was uh, insightful and helpful to some of you. It's, all, it's an excellent way to make a few bucks on the side, a small, very small investment. Um, some of the stuff you'll already have, like a computer, an ironing board and an iron. Um, a couple of bachelors might not have an ironing board and an iron, but again, very minimal stuff. Uh, the only thing really extra that you need to pick up for the most part would be the, tra the heat transfer film and then the Cameo Silhouette Plotter. Uh, excellent tool. Again, I don't have to wait for people to make my shirts for me. I can just do them myself, which is a really, really awesome benefit to having something like that. Again, if I need to do decals or whatever, I don't do it, decals and things like that on a large scale. So this is something that gets the job done for me and it does an excellent job. Anyways, if you like the video, again, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you, get, if you want to see some more videos on how to do this type of stuff or just how to wrap cars or wrap anything or vinyl related, don't forget the subscribe button. Again, a description in the description below, there's going to be all the products uh, that I used today for this, for this job right here. And again, every, everything you can pick up for the most part for a very small investment and it can make you some pretty decent money in the end. Again, thank you for watching. Again, I hope it was, hope it was uh, helpful for you. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Take care.